Hi, I'm Anna. I've been with Rob for quite a while now. We met in college, got married soon after, and have been together for 15 years. Life with Rob was generally peaceful. We lived in a decent house, had good jobs, and shared a bunch of common interests, but there was always something missing, a child. You see, we tried for years to get pregnant. We visited doctors, tried different treatments, and even considered adoption, but nothing worked. As time went on, the strain of our childless reality began to pull at our once strong bond. Arguments became frequent, and the future started to look a bit gloomy. But then, one day, something changed. It was a regular Wednesday morning. I woke up feeling a little queasy. Thinking it was something I ate, I brushed it off. But then I remembered I had missed my period. Could it be? I quickly rummaged through the bathroom cupboard and found a leftover pregnancy test from years ago. Without wasting a moment, I used it. Waiting for the result felt like the longest three minutes of my life. When I finally dared to look, it was positive. My heart raced. We were pregnant. The joy, the excitement, the fear, it all rushed in. I had to tell Rob. He was in the living room, engrossed in some paperwork. Taking a deep breath, I walked up to him, the test still in my hand. Rob, I began, trying to keep my voice steady. I'm pregnant. He looked up, his expression unreadable. Then he said, Are you sure? I mean, at this age? Is it even safe? I was taken aback. This wasn't the reaction I was expecting. I took the test, Rob. It's positive. He sighed. Anna, you know how hard it's been. And now, at 37, do you know the risks? I felt a sting of hurt. I thought you'd be happy, I whispered. I am. I just, I'm worried about you, about us, he replied, his voice softening a bit. We've waited so long for this, Rob. We can't let fear dictate our happiness now, I countered. He looked down, avoiding my gaze. Have you considered, maybe, not going through with it? I couldn't believe my ears. Terminate the pregnancy? No, Rob, this might be our only chance. We sat in silence for a while the weight of our situation pressing down on both of us. I wanted him to be as overjoyed as I was. But at that moment, all I saw in his eyes was fear and uncertainty. That night, as we lay side by side in bed, I held on to hope. Hope that our child would bring us closer again. Hope that our love was strong enough to overcome any challenge. And above all, hope for the future. The next few months were tough. As days turned into weeks, it became clear that this pregnancy wasn't going to be easy. I was often sick, nauseated, and felt exhausted all the time. But each little kick from inside reminded me why it was all worth it. One day, after feeling particularly weak, I collapsed. Thankfully, Rob was home and immediately rushed me to the hospital. As I lay on the cold hospital bed, surrounded by beeping machines, I felt more vulnerable than ever before. Is she going to be okay? I heard Rob ask Dr. Mitchell, his voice laced with worry. She needs rest, Dr. Mitchell replied. Her body is under a lot of strain due to the pregnancy. It's imperative that she stays relaxed and avoids any stress. That hospital stay was the first of many. Each time I was admitted, I'd watch Rob from the window, pacing back and forth in the hospital corridor, talking on the phone, sometimes even arguing with the billing department. One evening, as I lay in the hospital bed, Rob walked in with a weary look on his face. He looked like he hadn't slept for days. I met with Dr. Mitchell, he began. He said we need to consider the possibility of bed rest for the remainder of the pregnancy. I nodded slowly. If it's best for the baby, I'll do it. Rob sat down next to me, holding my hand. I'm sorry, Anna. I just, I wish I could do more to help. I squeezed his hand. You're here with me. That's more than enough. However, as the days went by, Rob's visits became less frequent. Sometimes he'd call, other times he'd send a text saying he was caught up with work. But the distance between us seemed to be growing. During one of my longer hospital stays, I was feeling particularly low. Missing the comfort of my home, I asked a nurse if I could use the phone to call Rob. It's been three days, I said trying to keep the tremor out of my voice when he answered. You haven't visited. I know, Anna, I'm just, it's hard for me. 
Seeing you like this, he admitted. Rob, I need you, now more than ever. Silence. I'll try to come by tomorrow, he finally said, his voice distant. But tomorrow turned into the day after, and soon a week had passed. Feeling isolated and alone, I confided in my nurse, Lisa. He's probably just scared, she suggested, trying to be comforting. Sometimes, when people can't handle situations, they distance themselves. One morning, after a particularly difficult night, Dr. Mitchell came into my room. I think it's time we discuss the birth plan, Anna, he began cautiously. There are some decisions to be made. Rob, despite his absences, was there for that discussion. We sat, hand in hand, listening to our options, praying for the strength to make the right choices. Days turned into weeks, and as the date approached, I felt a mix of excitement and apprehension. But I held on to hope, believing that once our child arrived, everything would fall into place. Little did I know, the hardest part of our journey was yet to come. The first moments of holding my daughter, Emma, in my arms were moments of pure bliss. Her tiny fingers, her soft cooing sounds, it felt like a dream. But that dream was quickly shattered by Dr. Mitchell's grim announcement. Anna, Rob, he began with a heavy sigh. There are some concerns regarding Emma's health. We've observed some abnormalities that suggest she might have a severe condition. Rob's face paled. What are you talking about? We'll need to run more tests to be certain, but it's important you're both prepared, Dr. Mitchell replied, his voice gentle but firm. That evening, as I cradled Emma, Rob walked into the room, a storm brewing in his eyes. He looked at me, then at Emma, and took a deep breath. Anna, he started, his voice shaking. How could you? Giving birth at this age? We knew the risks. Tears welled up in my eyes. Rob, I thought we wanted this. I thought we wanted a family. He was nearly shouting now. You should have considered an abortion. Why bring a child into the world with so many complications? Because of your selfishness, we now have a possibly sick child to look after. I was shocked. Rob, she's our daughter. We should be together in this, not pointing fingers. His face was red with anger. I can't believe I'm in this situation. I can't raise a child with potential disabilities. It's not the life I imagined. As the weight of his words sank in, a cold dread filled my heart. So what are you saying? Rob hesitated for a moment. I don't think I can do this. I can't be here, not like this. It felt like the floor had been pulled from beneath me. You're abandoning your daughter because she might be different? He looked away, unable to meet my gaze. I just can't handle it, Anna. Devastation turned into determination. Fine, if you're leaving, then leave for good, but you'll have no claim over Emma. He didn't respond. Instead, he turned and walked away, leaving me with our newborn daughter, grappling with the uncertainty of our future. Asterisk, asterisk. The first few weeks after Rob left were the hardest. The house felt empty, the silence was deafening, and the reality of being a single mother weighed heavily on me. But every time I looked into Emma's big, innocent eyes, I felt a surge of determination. I was going to make sure she had the best life possible, no matter what it took. My sister, Linda, was a godsend during this time. She came over often, helping with household chores and looking after Emma so I could rest. One evening, as I was feeding Emma, Linda walked in, holding two mugs of hot cocoa. Anna, she began gently, you need to think about the future. Have you considered finding a place of your own? I sighed, looking around the home that held so many memories. I've thought about it, but the thought of leaving this place, it's just hard. Linda took my hand. I know, but think about Emma. This house will always remind you of Rob and everything that happened. You both deserve a fresh start. She was right. I needed to let go of the past and focus on building a new life for Emma and me. The search for a new place wasn't easy. With my limited savings and no job, options were limited. But then, one day, Linda called me excitedly. Anna, you won't believe what I found. There's a small house for rent in my neighborhood. It's perfect for you and Emma. I went to see the house the very next day. It was a cozy two-bedroom place with a small garden in the back. 
The landlord, Mrs. Peterson, was a kind, elderly lady who lived next door. Linda speaks very highly of you, Mrs. Peterson said, smiling warmly. The place is yours if you want it. I felt tears of gratitude welling up. Thank you, Mrs. Peterson. This means so much to me. Moving in was hectic, but with Linda's help, we managed. As I set up Emma's room, filling it with toys and her tiny clothes, a sense of peace washed over me. This was our home, our sanctuary. Linda popped her head into the room. How's it going in here? I smiled, hugging Emma close. It's perfect. I can't thank you enough. She hugged us both. That's what family is for. You're not alone in this, Anna. Remember that. Days turned into weeks, and life began to settle into a new routine. Morning walks with Emma, visits to the local park, and coffee dates with Linda became our new normal. One day, as Emma and I were playing in the garden, Mrs. Peterson walked over, holding a tray of freshly baked cookies. Thought you two could use a treat, she said, smiling. I smiled back, taking a cookie. Thank you, Mrs. Peterson. It's delicious. She chuckled. Call me Ellie. Feels strange being called Mrs. Peterson by my new neighbor. We chatted as Emma giggled and played. Ellie shared stories of her own children, offering advice and wisdom. I felt a connection, a sense of community that had been missing for so long. As the days went by, the pain of the past began to fade. With the support of my sister and new friends like Ellie, I realized that while one chapter of my life had closed, another, even more beautiful one, was just beginning. Emma's first birthday was just around the corner, and I was deep in preparations. Ellie and Linda offered their assistance, suggesting ideas for decorations and games. As the day drew nearer, I found myself reflecting on the whirlwind of the past year. My baby girl, Emma, was blossoming into a bubbly, inquisitive child, her laughter a constant source of joy. One afternoon, as I was laying Emma down for her nap, the phone rang. The sound was sharp and unexpected. Hello? Hello, Anna, came the familiar voice. It was Dr. Mitchell. I felt a twinge of anxiety. Dr. Mitchell, is there a problem? He hesitated, which only deepened my concern. Anna, I need you to come to the hospital. There's something about Emma we need to discuss. I felt my heart in my throat. Is she okay? His voice was thick with regret. Please come in. We need to talk face to face. Linda agreed to watch Emma while I rushed to the hospital. The drive felt much longer than it was, my mind racing with worst case scenarios. Dr. Mitchell greeted me in his office, his usually calm face lined with worry. Anna, I'm so sorry to call you in this way. My patience was thinning. What's going on? Taking a deep breath, he began. There's been a grave error. The initial tests we ran on Emma after her birth got mixed up with another baby's. My confusion grew. Meaning? He met my gaze, his eyes filled with regret. Emma is healthy, Anna. She doesn't have any medical condition. I can't express how deeply sorry I am. The weight of his words hit me hard. You mean to tell me I've lived this past year under false assumptions? My life turned upside down because of this? His voice was barely above a whisper. Yes, and it's my responsibility. I can't begin to fathom the pain this has caused. I thought of Rob, of the bitterness and the pain. This mistake, it's shattered my life. Dr. Mitchell looked defeated. I know words can't change the past, but I'll do everything I can to make it right. I took a moment to collect my thoughts. I need time to process this. Driving home, a mix of relief and fury consumed me. Yet, seeing Emma's joyful face as I walked in grounded me. She was my world, and she was okay. That night, Linda and I sat down, and I relayed everything. She was horrified. Anna, what are you going to do? I looked at Emma, peacefully sleeping. For now, nothing. And I don't want Rob to know. He made his choice. Linda squeezed my hand. You're strong, Anna. Remember, you're not alone in this. In the stillness of the night, I reflected on our journey. Yes, the revelation about Emma's health was bittersweet. But one thing was for sure. I would protect and cherish her, regardless of the past. The swift passage of time amazed me. Before I knew it, 
Emma was already five and gearing up for her first day of school. My feelings were a whirlwind of pride, hope, and the natural apprehension of a mother. At breakfast, a few days before school, Emma gazed at me, her eyes shimmering with anticipation. Mom, will I be going to school like other kids? I smiled warmly. Yes, sweetie. In just a few days, you'll be starting. Her face lit up. Will I find friends there? Will they like me? Touched by her innocence, I assured her, Emma, you're such a lovely girl. Of course, they'll adore you. On her first day, dressed in her new school uniform with a pink backpack hanging from her shoulders, Emma paused at the school gates. With a quiver in her voice, she admitted, Mommy, I'm scared no one will talk to me. I crouched to her eye level. Honey, always remember to be yourself. You're amazing and they'll see that. Just give it some time. Her small hand waved goodbye as she joined the bustling crowd of students. I watched her until she was out of sight, my heart heavy with the typical worries of a parent. A few weeks later, Emma was all excitement and stories about her new friend Sophia. Their adventures during breaks, their shared love for painting, and their little secrets. One day, she bounced home asking, Mom, can Sophia come over tomorrow? Delighted at her blossoming friendship, I agreed. Absolutely! I'm eager to meet your new buddy. The next afternoon was filled with their giggles and playful shouts. From the corner of my eye, I noticed their genuine bond and thought of how childhood friendships were so pure and uncomplicated. As the sun dipped, a car pulled up. Emma, holding Sophia's hand, led her to the door. To my shock, standing there were Rob and a young woman, presumably his new wife. Emma, inside. Now. Rob's voice was curt. Sophia, sensing the tension, looked worriedly between her parents and me. Daddy, I had so much fun. Emma's my best friend. Rob's gaze was cold. Sophia, we've talked about this. You shouldn't play with dot 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 inferior children. His voice dripped with disdain, making it clear whom he referred to. I felt a rush of anger. Before I could retort, the young woman, probably trying to mediate, gently tugged at Sophia's hand. Come, dear. Let's go home. Emma stood close to me, her eyes filled with confusion and hurt. As the car drove away, she whispered, Mom, why did he say that? Holding her close, I replied, Sometimes, sweetie, people don't say the nicest things, but always remember, you're wonderful just the way you are. That evening, as I tucked Emma in, I promised myself that no matter what, I'd always protect her from the cruel judgments of the world. Only days after the incident, my phone buzzed with an unknown number. I hesitated, then answered, Hello? A woman's voice, soft yet firm, responded. Hi, this is Emily, Sophia's mother. Can we talk? Surprised, I replied cautiously. Of course. What's on your mind? She hesitated. I'd rather discuss this face to face. Can we meet tomorrow? There's a cafe around the corner from your house. After a moment, I agreed. All right, see you at 10 a.m. The next morning, I saw Emily waiting. She looked out of place, her pristine appearance contrasting with the laid-back vibe of the cafe. As I approached, she stood up, offering a polite, if slightly forced, smile. Thank you for coming, she began, her eyes searching mine. After the other day, I couldn't shake off a nagging feeling that there's more to the story than Rob's told me. I took a deep breath. I'm not one to spread tales, but since Sophia is involved, I think you should know. She leaned forward, anticipation evident. Please, tell me everything. Over the next hour, I unfolded our past. How Rob and I had struggled with fertility, my unexpected pregnancy, his disinterest, the misdiagnosis, his leaving, and my subsequent journey with Emma. I made sure to be factual, not letting emotion color the narrative. Emily sat stunned. He never told me any of this. He said you were the one who left him, and he always painted such a rosy picture of your marriage. I shrugged. Sometimes, people craft stories to cope, or to hide. She looked defeated. I feel like such a fool. I thought our love was genuine, but now it seems like he was just replacing one life with another. Emily, I started, my tone firm. It's not about him anymore. It's about Sophia and Emma. They formed a bond. I don't want Emma to suffer because of our past. 
She nodded. I completely agree. Children shouldn't be dragged into adult disputes. As we parted, I felt a weight lifted. For the first time, I felt like I was truly free from Rob's shadow, having laid our past bare. That evening, as Emma played with her toys, she looked up. Mom, will I see Sophia again? Smiling, I said, Yes, sweetie, you will. And always remember, your past doesn't define your future, you do. My phone buzzed on the coffee table, startling me from my thoughts. Rob's name flashed on the screen, a name I hadn't expected to see in a long time. Hesitating for only a moment, I answered, Anna. Rob's voice was filled with a mix of anger and desperation. Do you have any idea what you've done? I frowned, taken aback. What are you talking about? Emily left me, he spat out bitterly. She filed for divorce, and she's taken everything. I've lost almost everything, Anna, and it's all because she spoke to you. I could hardly believe what I was hearing. Rob, you made your choices. I just told her the truth. There was a heavy pause. She also told me about Emma, that she's healthy. You never told me. Why would I? After everything you said, after everything you did, you didn't deserve to know, I retorted. Rob's voice grew softer, almost pleading. Anna, I made a mistake. I realize that now. I want to be there for Emma. I want to be there for you. We can be a family again. I scoffed in disbelief. Now that your life's in shambles, you suddenly want us back? You're unbelievable, Rob. Anna, I know I messed up, but I've changed. Please, give me a chance. I could feel anger rising in me. You walked out on us, Rob. You called our daughter inferior and turned your back. Now that your little fairy tale with Emily has ended, you think you can just waltz back into our lives? Think again. He sounded desperate now. I was wrong, Anna. I see that now. Can't you give me another chance? No, I replied firmly. Emma and I have moved on. We're doing just fine without you, and we don't need or want you in our lives. But Anna... It's over, Rob. Goodbye. I ended the call, my heart racing. I took a deep breath, letting the emotions wash over me. Emma and I had each other, and that was all that mattered. I wouldn't let Rob's selfishness disrupt our peace. Whatever challenges lay ahead, we'd face them together.